Thank you so much. So, uh, Jean Peter already uh, talked about my background because uh, I have been started to work in the aid service organization 30 years ago and uh, in Germany to fight for harm reduction and I changed from the NGO to the governmental side in 1998 or so, in 89, no, 98, yes, because then also there was a harm reduction part of national poly drug policy in Germany, including implementation of uh, drug consumption rooms, things like that already mentioned. But, and at that time I was also in the last 16 years member of the official delegation to the Commission on Narcotic Drugs in Vienna, where they already, which had been already presented by Jamie. And you can imagine also like rooms like this and people sitting there and discussing on resolutions 24 hours more or less. And sometimes discussing whether there should be a semicolon or a comma. But sometimes they are also discussing on the content. I will come back to that later. So, uh, it was already mentioned by Jamie in the last 10 years is a very big change in this uh, wording and the policy of the UN and the CND. And now it's seen also when you look to the pathogenesis of dependency disorders, it's not only a point of dependency or uh, what is going on in, in the body, in the brain, but it's also part of uh, all these social exclusion situation, why people using substances. Of course, they're using also for recreational reasons, but many people using it to forget their really uh, depressive situation. On the other hand, uh, when you look come to access to treatment in only in Western Europe, there's uh, a quite good access to treatment. In other parts of the world, uh, only very few people get access to treatment. And as I'm now to uh, speaking on behalf of the University of Frankfurt, which is part of the European uh, project in Central Asia, Central Asia Drug Action Program, in this region, there's very little access to treatment options already mentioned in Kazakhstan, they have some OST sites, but very low level, uh, coverage. Uh, a bit, a little bit better coverage in Kyrgyzstan and uh, increasing coverage in Tajikistan, but in Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan, no access to OST. Uh, there's some access to other harm reduction measures like uh, CNC exchange schemes, but uh, they are not uh, what they say, it's, uh, they are uh, state-driven and sometimes the users don't use these kinds of treatment or uh, harm reduction measures. And, but anyway, it's uh, very important that there had been change of the idea of what is dependency and is no longer seen as a criminal behavior, but uh, as a chronic and relapsing disorder. Of course, it's a medical definition and we can discuss this, but anyway, that changed the attitude uh, towards people using substances. And also, there's a moving from sanction-oriented approaches to health-oriented oriented approaches all over the world, but in some parts of the world very, very slowly. And already mentioned this political declaration from 2009, it is said it should be promoted uh, an effective, comprehensive, integrated drug demand reduction programs based on scientific evidence, whatever that means, and including measures, for example, so-called social related support services. And that is interesting because this term, related support services, means harm reduction. Because at that time, especially German delegation, together with NGOs and also other European uh, a delegation f had a hard, big fight to use the term harm reduction in this resolution, but it was rejected. Rejected by a coalition of United States, Federation of Russia, uh, Iran, Saudi Arabia, wonderful coalition, you know, and uh, China, for example, and other states. So, because all this, in this, uh, the text must be uh, 
must be supported by 100% of the delegates. This, this is why it's very, very difficult to get uh, this kind of support. Anyway, uh, it is mentioned that uh, supply reduction alone does not work. And you must know most of the uh, uh, delegations, uh, delegates are law enforcement people. Now and now more and more are from the public health side, but uh, that means it was really a fight, hard fight to get this into this resolution. Uh, supply reduction alone does not work. Anyway, uh, there was then the special session of the United Nations General Assembly in 2016 in New York, and also there uh, had been asked to ensure non-discriminatory access to broad range of interventions, including psychosocial, behavioral, and medication-assisted treatment. This is also very important because this term, medication-assisted treatment, had been rejected normally especially by Russia and other delegation, but here in this uh, outcome document it is mentioned for the first time. Uh, so it is an, a really uh, improvement, I guess. And also it was uh, then a resolution supported to promote and implement these uh, international WHO and UNODC guidelines uh, and standards, international standards of the treatment of drug use disorders and uh, to provide this guidance to assist and train health professionals uh, all over the world. And this is one part of the EU project uh, in Central Asia, which we try to do. Of course, and there are other international standards uh, by UNODC, there are also some standards concerning harm reduction measures, uh, um, mainly because of the HIV crisis. And, and, and of course, when you look to these, uh, guidance, uh, it, it, of course, the whole range of services, of harm reduction services, are supported by UN uh, and UN ODC documents. And of course, this is necessary because it, what means treatment? In many, many countries, this kind of treatment is still the, yeah, defin defined as treatment, although everybody knows this is uh, causing harms, not treatment. And in, so far, uh, we have supported these uh, international standards. And on the other hand, we had a vivid debate with uh, Jamie and uh, the other international NGOs on this. Because uh, when you look into the, the text, uh, you will find some wordings uh, and, and critical, uh, which of course could be and should be read critically. And the, you must know that these standards are based mo mainly on their uh, scientific research from the United States and there in, in the last years of course they're using this uh, term that uh, uh, drug dependency is a brain disease or part of brain disease not alone but anyway and that causes of course uh, strong debates on this and we had not a fight but a friendly discussion with our friends and colleagues from the NGOs anyway we think that uh, uh, it is important, and uh, no, of course, we know that there are a lot of, when you could look to the history of concepts, what is uh, drug dependency, you will find a lot of very difficult, different uh, ideas on that. And, uh, but from a more moral, unmoral attitude to more and more an, uh, the idea that it's a chronic disease. Anyway, of course, it's also mentioned it's a chronic relapse in brain disease, and we can discuss this. Anyway, I think this uh, document, this uh, uh, standards are very useful because they are really based on asking for human rights, protection of the patient rights, uh, and you see here all this thing which is very important to have for anonymity of confidentiality, no compulsory treatment, which is in most of these uh, countries also in, in Central Asia still existing, informed consent, contact with family relatives, voluntary HIV testing, prohibition of physical and psychological coercion, and transparent procedures from complaints. This is very important. Also, uh, availability, accessibility of the treatment. That means also there must be a legal framework, there must be flexibility of the opening hours, and the treatment must be affordable. This is very important because only in Kazakhstan it's paid by the state budget. In other countries in, in this region, uh, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, for example, the patients have to pay for certain kind of treatment. 
Uh, detox is mainly paid or by insurance, but it's only very, very, how to say, every, even for medication you have to pay by your own. Uh, only OST is paid by <laughs> international donors. And that caused also some problems because some people, for example, with uh, diabetes, don't get a syringe. They have to buy a syringe, whereas uh, drug users uh, get uh, the syringes for free. And that causes sometimes also in the society problems, you can imagine. Anyway, uh, it is also important to, that these standards are based on the dignity of the patients and to, uh, on the protection of human rights of the patients. And also uh, concerning imprisonment or imprisonment, uh, prison settings, uh, treatment should be f uh, an alternative to penal sanctions. And if this is not possible, it, it, in the treatment system, in, it should be also, these standards should be used. So I will not go into all the details. Uh, you can, on the, on the website of UNODC, you can see this uh, uh, loaded down. But anyway, these principles, I think, it's, uh, are very important. And now I came to our project, because uh, uh, the German part of this project is to support these Central Asian countries in their treatment of harm reduction programs and actions. And we using uh, more or less best European practices and international standards. And we already organized uh, several trainings. And we normally use uh, German experts who are speaking Russian or coming uh, from this region and because many of the German working in this field had been born and lived in Central Asia and especially in Kazakhstan, now working and living in Germany, but they know the culture, they know the, the language, and this is very important for us to, uh, and helpful. Uh, anyway, we conducted many of these trainings you see here. Professor Stöver, for example, he does trainings together with a colleague from Vienna, from Austria, on, on the prison system. And we organized also a study visit to Berlin and showed them how the treatment system, including harm reduction services like drug consumption rooms, are working in Germany. Uh, they are impressed, but of course they say, oh, unfortunately we are not able to implement such uh, things in our countries. Anyway, it, I think it, it can help to change the attitude of these people. Uh, and most of these people are narcologists, so-called narcologists, so, and uh, working in this field for many, many years, and they want to change these attitudes. They want to change the, uh, the Russian idea in, in the concept of narcology as a, a work to, to, to change the attitudes of people to change, because it had been seen at, in, in Russian times, uh, or in Soviet times, as a uh, antisocial behavior that must be cured or... <laughs> And, and this has changed totally. Now, um, most of this treatment is based on scientific evidence and also on psychosocial support services. But of course, the structure is uh, not comparable with Western European countries. And uh, yeah, we organized uh, in the last months uh, two trainings in Kyrgyzstan and uh, Kazakhstan on these international standards. And we hope very much that it can help to introduce, to implement these standards because when you look to the, to the CND resolution, all these countries have to implement. They are not forced, but they should do it. And we hope very much that it could uh, happen. And I have to also to mention that uh, concerning the delegations, the official delegations, uh, Jamie uh, already mentioned this in Germany. Now we have also, I think last CND in Vienna, first time an, uh, a representative of a German drug user organization was part of the official delegation. And that is very important. And I tried to fight very hard for this many, many years, but now it, uh, we could succeed, and this is a very important part. Uh, and, and I think also the German delegation is hearing to the voices of the NGOs and try to uh, take them at least into account. Not always supporting, but anyway, it's a good relationship, I think, and this is very important. Well, now I'm retired from my official job in the ministry, so I can talk on behalf of the university. I'm a little bit more free to, to, to say what I'm thinking. I did it also when I worked with the ministry, but anyway, uh, it's a very a pleasure to be again here at harm reduction conferences because I had done this for many, many years, but then in the, in the ministry, my bosses didn't like so much that, uh, to send me to harm reduction conferences. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much.